so many people have asked me since Endwalker has released, how am I liking the Sage? Did it meet my expectations? Or alternatively, am I disappointed? Because some people really haven't enjoyed the Sage as much as they had hoped, which is totally okay. I'm hoping that they can find a different healer that clicks for them though. But a lot of people have been like, oh my god, are you disappointed with the Sage? Uh, people ask me, do I still plan to main it? And all these questions are <laughs> probably especially because I have written in-depth ultimate guides on it from media tour information and just like this way too many videos honestly um and i've just been really overall very excited for the sage for a very long time and now i finally have my hands on it i am currently in endwalker's quest lines with it and so i have hit level 80 obviously and going on 81 I have it fully geared out i have the eden mourn weapon and everything and so this is my video answering that question in full there are pros there are cons before I say another thing though, or talk at all about the Sage, is there will be absolutely no spoilers related to patch 5.5 or Endwalker storylines or the Sage questline in this at all. I'm actively making sure that I do not edit in anything like that. But I will start out with though, on that note, is that the Sage questline is breathtaking. I'm not saying spoilers, I will not say the details. The details in the questline though, I will say are stunning and like the attention that they did to particular aspects of the content was just at a level that um, you'd come to expect from the 14 development team. It was really <laughs> their level of work. It was really, really good. And it really told me a lot about a lot of things and got me informed on a lot of things regarding the Sage, its place in the world and such. So that is incredibly vague, but I wanted to avoid spoilers, but basically the quest line does a ton to make you understand what the Sage is about, and it doesn't just tug at your heartstrings, but rather grabs them and yards at your heartstrings. We'll say that I got a little emotional at times, so I was like, oh my god. And as someone who did take courses in the past in medicine and cadaver anatomy and such, wow, the story just just the sage's lore the story all of it resonated with me like i feel so connected to the sage at this point with its lore and what it's about it's just absolutely wild i've never felt this way about a class in any game before no not even the scholar and i made the scholar for like a decade i have never felt this way and yes i do remember the medic from wild star and such this is in like a class of its own it is incredible now that leads into me talking about purely aesthetics and i'm gonna have footage in the background of a bunch of different new list types and just like the sage arbor which unfortunately I did go down to like the Ondo Cups and I grabbed up the armor set. It's the same one as the baseline armor set that you're given. But yes, the armor, um, the baseline armor looks incredible. Obviously, we've seen that a ton. It looks great. The visor on top of your face looks really good. I'm also going to be more focusing on the new list in the footage. And I'm showing a bunch that I got from the dungeons. And you can see a massive range in how they look. Sometimes the bottom two have a very different appearance than even the top two. And like, I have to say, like, Whoever animated this, like the team that animated this did such a freaking good job. The way that they move is aesthetically appealing. It's, 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 um, it's well done. It's extremely well done from top to bottom. The new lift, the weapon itself, the animations, everything, the attention to detail is beyond anything that even I could vote for. Very, very, very high quality work. Now we're talking about impressions with the Sage's toolkit, and the footage here is explicitly from the Shadowbringers dungeons before I got Panheima, because then we go into 6.0 spoilers, we are avoiding those spoilers at any cost here, but I can say, when I got Panheima, oh my god, God, the damage intake was so smooth. I have a lot to say about damage intake on the Sage. It is literally the smoothest damage intake he learned in the entire game. Bar none. It is incredible. But now I'm spoiling my video. But the first thing I want to get out of the room is this big freaking elephant here. The learning curve. It is steep. It's there. I have heard so many people ask me, Oh, Cole, are you freaking disappointed with the Sage? Do you really think you're going with it? We keep wiping in dungeons. Oh my god, I can't get past the, like, spider pull. The tank needs to do, like, like uh, individual packs of mobs with me. I'm gonna be serious. If you are not comfortable with weaving in your mitigations, with weaving in, like, your barriers, with uh, doing a lot of DPS as a healer, I don't think Sage will be the right fit for you. And that is nothing meant as an insult. People have different play styles. And you know what? White Mage is fantastic, and it plays very differently from the Sage. It's a lot on GCD. Ask plays very different from the Sage. It's a pure healer, just the same as the White Mage, but now it focuses more on OGCD heals. Alternatively, if you want to be a barrier healer that doesn't necessarily get penalized for not doing DPS, then I do encourage you to check out the scholar because the fairy heals regardless if you do damage or not this is not like a diss that is like the furthest thing that from what i am trying to do i just think different play styles like different jobs appeal to particular play styles a bit more than others but i can say it fits 
my playstyle. This is what I have wanted for a very long time, and I can say during my times as dungeons, as someone who has taken Scholar through them ad nauseum throughout the, what, like 2.5 years of uh, Shadowbringers, I can say when I push it and DPS as hard as I could, like pedal to the metal, like just slamming it as hard as I fucking could, like it was amazing. The cardio system felt incredibly rewarding. The heals were focused where I wanted, when I wanted, and everything I asked for was delivered, and I love it. I really do love it. Now, my next point is Sage damage intake feels a lot smoother than even the Scholar's, which the Scholar already was smoothing out the damage intake. The Sage is even smoother. I am saying that is, that is at least my opinion. I don't know if that's an objective fact. That is honest to God exactly how I feel, and I know that I might make people confused at first because Sage has the combination of Hyman, Pan Hyman, and Taracol, and Caracol. It can be very very easy to kick up their cardio procs with Soteria too. Undeniably that alongside the other parts of the kit like uh, the Holos ability that is another 10% damage mitigation that can stack individually. Like Taracol doesn't stack with Caracol. Like, those are individual but you can stack with Holos. Like overall the Sage just feels like the damage is just taken in smooth. Like the damage intake how to like the damage intake profile if I had to make an analogy it's like velvet. It's like silk. It's smooth. The cardia underneath Hyma effect feels great or even Panheim a single target feels oh my god so good and the fact that I can control the Haima effect oh my god I'm like a little bit of a control freak whatever but it felt good unlike Seraph's Seraphic Embrace which is very powerful I'm not gonna say it's not good I could control this and it felt really good or Panheima being non-stop AoE shields I'm gonna take that over Seraph's shield and heal split respectfully again that's a preference thing that is my preference though or take Tarkoli with the 10% mitigation over Xcog that's gonna bounce HP bars up and down. Am I saying Xcog's bad? Absolutely not. It's a very good burst skill. You combine it with recitation, you can basically go AFK in a dungeon. It's not what I'm saying here. Xcog's good, but what I'm saying is like the smoothness factor. Xcog's gonna be whoop whoop up, down, up, down. Tarkoli's gonna just smooth it out over its duration. You'd almost invert it and think, oh, like this is like a inverse heal over time effect because the damage just doesn't come in. I started noticing during pulls that I gravitated to using Caracol for that 10% mitigation and then like initially and then leading into resolving extra chip damage right before the mi mitigation from Caracol went away with Taracol to just to give that like ongoing 10% mitigation. The Taracol also gave that burst of healing which really felt really good for picking up the tank kind of in the middle of the pull pack. I mean pack pull. And then you add in the Holos 10% for 20% mitigation stacking. It is incredible. I will need to see more at level 90, but Sage's mitigation and damage intake smoothing is stunning. I cannot emphasize this enough. I am incredibly pleased with it. It is like spike damage should be pretty much never really seen on a Sage. On that note, Haima and Panheima do also stack too, which resolves a huge issue that I had with the Sage versus Scholar and the Sage that I had problems with the fact that Scholar once surrounds out is such a strong burst. The Sage can now stack Haima and Panheima so they can burst with the shields. So that problem of mine was basically obliterated. Let's talk about the mobility ability Icarus. I love it just as much as I thought I would. Icarus is amazing. She's perfect. She's beautiful. She's a model because she could run out on the <laughs> runway in a diaper and I would still say, oh my god, Icarus, you look beautiful. It's actually a game changer to the point where even under 24 out under 24 hours of using the Sage, I found myself using it just instinctually in positions that I never really thought of using it on a healer. It just felt good to the point of going to another healer. I might be actually annoyed just being like, you don't have this. I wanted to use this mobility. What the hell is going on here? I worry now. <laughs> I might just be hooked on the sage. Now on the note of mobility, let's talk about always casting damaging spells to get the cardio procs. That isn't really a problem for me that I experienced so far on the sage. Harder content might push it, but I'm really finding myself rarely even needing to use Toxic Con stacks. You have so much mobility with Flagma Balls, refreshing your creation doses dot, uh, even your shields are instant cast that you can move during. It's incredibly nice to have the fast shields, by the way, on that note, because sometimes they're not perfectly on point and can miss an incoming tank buster. Hey, I never said I'm perfect. The cast time of Adlo is, uh a deterrent at this point to me in my opinion just just it's just preferences guys not objectively a fact it's just me my take here mobility i have had very little problems with spamming damage non-stop it has been very easy now other things stood out like quality of life things and i don't need people to stand in my eight yard range sacred soil instead i apply caracoli to people in a 15 yard range of me and i don't care where they stand after that that feels freaking good <laughs> after so many people uh, after so many years of people just standing outside of sacred soil another example and i honestly could keep going here but I'm gonna like try and make sure my video doesn't get to like an hour in length but Soteria is convenient oh my 
God, it's gonna be so hard to go back to Scholar with Fairy Union. Soteria is convenient. It's immediately available. It's on a 90 second cooldown timer. No questions asked, no strings attached, no amplifier or whatever. It's just an amplifier for the cardio system, no strings. I find this intensely more convenient than the annoying short range fairy that the fairy needs to walk to the tank, blah, blah, blah. I find myself almost instinctually reaching for Soteria already. No strings feels great. Now I want to talk about the Adder Skull system a little bit and I'm actually gonna keep it very brief. Passive Replenishment alongside Rizumata, which will give you a free Adder Skull, feels incredible. It feels freaking good. I like it over the Aetherflow system. Getting my hands onto it, it is a big, big improvement. Again, this is all preferences. I know that it works out to the same mathematically, but it feels better to me. That's under 24 hours of playing the Sage. Also like that I don't have on the back of my mind stressing about wanting to spend more on energy drain. I don't want to say stressing, but I just don't I appreciate not having that cognitive load on the back of my mind of like feeling the urgency of like, oh, I want these energy drains, just volley them out, volley them out. And I always had this urgency in the back of my mind and I just felt more relaxed on the Sage. It's ironic because it is a new job and I'm like, why do I feel more relaxed on the Sage? It, it was really weird actually. I don't know how to even describe that. It, it, I'm gonna have to think about it and do like a follow-up video. But like, I literally felt more relaxed on the Sage when I was healing. I don't know why yet. Those are my feelings. I think that it has something to do with this. So now to the negatives for the Sage, because to be balanced and fair there should always be some problem. Nothing is perfect and the Sage is definitely not, but these are some of the issues that mm, might be more me getting used to things over time because it has been, I'm, what, I've played the Sage maybe 10 hours at this point and ironically enough I've had to get a lot of sleep in just because I was so tired from work on Friday. I mean Thursday. So maybe I've gone 10 hours in but these things did stand out to me. First one is my biggest one and it Eucratia is a skill that you use very often as a Sage, obviously. It's a very big thing. They were talking about, the, oh, the Sage augments abilities and how it was a big system. And I'm very pleased where I can't keybind it where I did because I was thinking, is my problem with the keybind? It's perfect keybind for me. It works really well. But what I noticed is it seems hard to queue since it's a spell or something's going on here. Something's just difficult about getting it to like spell queue. I don't know what's going on. Like for something like I want to spam a tank that isn't used mitigations in a wall to wall pull, uh, not being able to to cue this actually annoyed me for a while. I'm, I'm still kind of getting used to it, but it does stand out to me still that I'm not about to like go onto my YouTube channel where I try and just keep things very real and lie to you about like, oh, this wasn't a thing. Like this did definitely bother me. It's still something that um, I I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on here. I hope that maybe it's just a bug. Maybe my UI is a little broken. I'm gonna have to look into it. Now, the second thing is perhaps this is now on a 30 second cooldown timer. And I really, really liked emergency tactics when pushed into a corner with AoE healing. I don't like spamming prognosis, which is only a 300 potency AoE heal. I'd rather be spamming something like a 500 potency emergency tactics sucker. Uh, this is like, uh, how to say it? Um, Perhaps this is 30 seconds and this is flat out double what Scholar is with Emergency Tactics and after years and years and years of getting used to the Scholar, Peps is on the same button, it's just like I find myself reaching for that button in situations and being like, oh it's like halfway down the cooldown or like 75% on the cooldown and me going, oh crap. <laughs> But on the flip side of Pepsis, because I, I don't want to just say the negative, like there was definitely a stark positive to it, is double dipping the shield where you let the shield crack a little bit, take a little bit of damage, and then pop Pepsis felt really, really good. That felt really, really rewarding. But I'm at the point where it's like, oh my gosh, why is this double to go down? Oh my god, oh my god. So in conclusion, the Sage is actually, for the incredibly large majority part, actually way better than I had hoped for. Not just what I had hoped for, better than what I had. Uh, I Like, I had high expectations going in, and they were actually surpassed when I got my hands onto it, playing it in dungeons with a bunch of different tanks. So some used cooldowns great, some used them really not so great. But I'm at the point where I see myself potentially having um, concerns and frustrations going back to the Scholar, actually. Which my intention, 100%, is to play both, depending on which raid needs what kind of utility. This discussion is way too premature. Like, the Sage First Impressions video is what this is, and uh, let's first get through the MSQ and through level 90 and do some extreme trials first before I go to the deep end with that one. Anyhow, that's just my thoughts and opinions. I'm just one dude. I'm really curious, actually, what are your thoughts and opinions? And I've heard, like, a whole smorgasbord already, but I'm curious, like, what are your thoughts? Like, is it good? Is it bad? Are you having a struggle with adapting to its style? Maybe you haven't tried Sage yet, but maybe you have. Maybe if you did, did you like it as much as I do? For me, I'm very, very intensely happy with it. Anyhow, that's it for this video. Take care and happy end work, everyone.